Well, hello there, good people of the world. My name is Kristana. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back friends and family. Today I'm gonna be working on a dresser. So this dresser behind me is something I did a few years ago and poor my, my poor husband. Okay, so I started sanding it just so you guys know. It didn't look like that a little bit ago and I wanted to see what the wood looked like underneath. I had this really cool idea for this dresser but then I realized my idea was to do like half wood, half paint. Then I realized that this part of the dresser, this part of the dresser is actually particle board. Everything else is cool wood, but this is particle board. So it pretty much ruined my idea. Got rid of my idea. So I thought my husband is such a patient man. <laughs> He's been using this dresser. I don't know about you, but he has been using it and I really wanted to just do something nice for him. So today I'm gonna to be using Wise Owl paint, but we're going to be painting this entire piece. We're gonna do a one color finish, which I know is not normally like me, but again, he's such a patient man. So we are gonna be using the color Inkwell in here. And this is a very, very, very dark blue, almost like a, I don't even want to say it's a navy blue. It's like a black blue, but a lot of people have problems with top coating black or dark blue or whatever, a dark color. And so I'm going to show you guys today how to get the perfect finish for dark colors. We also are going to be painting the hardware. So I'm going to show you the perfect way. If you want to paint your hardware, how you're going to do it and have it last. Okay, so we are going to be painting the hardware because my idea is to have a like, instead of it black on black, you know, like a whole matte black finish, we're gonna do a whole matte dark bluish black finish. We'll be using Wise Owl's matte varnish as well. I'm going to show you guys how you can transform this piece with these colors. And also, if you didn't notice, this is a little bit hand painted, a little bit of a, a transfer on here. So I'm going to show you how to remove a transfer and remove that previous paint finish so that you can paint over it. It doesn't require us to completely strip it down. We will be using my surf prep to prepare the surface. And the key is really for a very nice smooth finish is to make sure that your surface underneath everything is nice and smooth. And so I'm going to show you guys how to prepare this piece how you can paint over this. I don't, I'm gonna be quite honest, it's not my favorite piece ever. <laughs> Someone told me it looked like a swarm of bees. Okay, I liked it when I first did it, but uh, okay, obviously now we don't like it and my poor husband needs something different. So we are going to be doing a one color finish. I'm gonna show you guys how to get dark finishes perfectly, perfect, perfect, perfect with our wise owl paint that I love. All right guys, stay here. The first thing I did was remove all of the hardware. And if you guys have ever bought hardware recently, a lot of times it comes with two different size screws and some of them that are really long don't generally work for a lot of different furniture. You can cut those down, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually put them in from the inside of the drawer out and that allows me to pull the drawer open and close. You can also use the tape method that I've used. I've used screwdrivers. So this is just another hack to show you guys how to do this. I did keep all the clothes in here, so let's hope I don't get any on the, the clothes. <laughs> like with every project, I am going to clean it first. It doesn't matter if I know where it's been or not. I always clean first because you just never know. I don't know. I have kids and a dog and we live, you know, there's dust and all the things. So who knows? So I clean it really well because I will be sanding that transfer and that hand painted surface off. I'm going to start with an 80 grit, but the reason why I clean it first is so that we know that we are not just sanding dirt and grime into that finish. So we clean it, always clean it. And then I'm going to sand it with an 80 grit, a 120 grit, and then a 220 grit. And what we're trying to get is a nice smooth finish because if we want a nice smooth finish for later, the key is to have a smooth finish to start with. Mm -hmm. 
We are going to use Wise Owl's Chalk Synthesis Paint, and this color is Inkwell. So we are going to need two coats of this, but I wanted to show you something really quick. And I'm applying this with one of the high quality Wise Owl synthetic brushes. But if you can see right here, in the areas where there's white, it shows a little bit more. So there is an option. You could go over this entire piece with one of their gray primers, and then you probably would only need one full coat and then maybe a skim coat. And I'm gonna show you here in a second how you can see the difference. So the top drawers, there's already a dark gray color, right? So you can see the paint on here and you can see that the coverage is really nice over that dark gray. But when you go over to the right, you can see how the white pops through and that's with any dark color. So I did not put a dark gray primer over the entire thing, but I'm giving you guys the suggestion of you could do that, especially if you're wanting to do a dark color over a light color, it will save you a lot of time. So this is their dark gray primer. You could use that. Let's say that it was a white piece of furniture and you wanted to do it black or like this color inkwell, you'd probably want to do a primer. So that's one coat. And then I'm going to show you right here. We're going to just go over it with our second coat. Trust the process. The second coat covers it really nice. So that is just kind of a tip for you guys. It doesn't matter what kind of paint it is. A lot of times these dark colors, if there's white underneath, it's just a pain. So using a primer, would have probably given me a better coverage, but coulda, woulda, shoulda, I didn't, but now I'm telling you to do it. So do as I say, not as I do, folks. I wanna show you something that I do with every single paint that I use. So I go and I do long strokes, okay? And so right now what I'm doing is I am doing horizontal strokes and vertical strokes to kind of get the coverage on there. And then what I finally do is I go over everything vertical and then I do one last brush stroke going in the same direction. And this allows the paint to self level really nice. And then the brush strokes are all going the same way. Once everything's dry, I'm taking a super fine 10 millimeter pad with my surf prep. So about a 220 or above, and we're just going to smooth out that paint. Now you can see that it's getting lighter. Don't worry about it. Once you put your top coat on, it's going to darken back up. So that is very normal. This is normal for most paints. You'll see this a lot with darker colored paints. It's not changing the color. What we're doing is just smoothing out the surface because we do want a smooth finish on here. So we're going to use my surf prep and we're going to smooth everything out first. Once I'm done, I take a microfiber cloth to get all of the residual dust off. There shouldn't be too much with my surf prep because it pulls most of the dust. If you don't have a surf prep, you may want to take, you know, maybe a damp rag and get it off. But next thing we're gonna do is I am taking Wise Owl's matte varnish and I'm going to stir it really well first. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pour it into a separate container. With dark colors, you don't say navies, blacks, dark, you know, purples, browns, whatever. This is a really good thing to do. You can do this actually with any solid color, but it's really good to do with darker colors. So we're going to pour some in there and then I'm just going to put a dollop of the actual inkwell paint in there. And then we're going to stir it around. And what it's going to do is it's going to tint that top coat. The top coat is going to look almost, it's going to have a little bit of like a blue hue to it and that's okay. What it's going to do is it's going to dry with a clear matte look, but with this tinting this top coat, what it's going to do is it's just going to help you get a better finish when you have dark colors because dark colors sometimes tend to streak. And so this just, it is just a hack. It gives you a little bit better of a finish. So I'm going to pour that in and I have used, this is a roller pan, but I'm not going to use a roller on this because I have used a roller before. I'm going to show you another way I do it. So this is a wall brush. That is a synthetic wall brush. 
Wise Owl does carry them in the Klingon, but you could get a good quality wall brush and that covers quite a bit of surface. And you're going to dip it in to your top coat and paint mixture and you're gonna wipe off the excess and you're going to go in one direction and you're going to just do, get it on the, the drawer and then once you have it all on the drawer, you are going to do a final go, just like when I do my paint, we're gonna do a final brush stroke going all in the same direction and you're going to allow that to dry. Now, do not overwork it. If you miss a couple areas, that is okay. Don't worry about it because you're gonna get it on the second one. So again, if you see, I do the final brush strokes all going the same way, that is what I do. And then I'm gonna allow it to fully dry. For some of the thinner areas, I used a smaller brush and I just went in one direction with that with a light hand. The key to this is doing thin layers as well. You do not want to glop, you know, when you're doing the paint and when you're doing the top coat, you never want to glop it on. You want to do thin layers. That is always best. And then also on the bottom part, what I did is I used the wall brush on the bottom part as well, but I took that thin brush or the smaller brush and I went into that little area that is recessed so that I could get any kind of top coat that may have sat in there. So make sure you're cognizant of that too. If you've got areas where there are recessed areas, make sure that you always double check those so that you don't have globs of top coat sitting in there. Once your layer of top coat is completely dry, you're going to take a very fine grit sandpaper. So this is a very fine rad pad, and you're gonna just go over that area. You don't want to sand it off, but you just wanna kind of scuff sand so that you can smooth it out and you can prepare it for another layer of top coat. And this is gonna give you a really nice finish. So after you're done sanding it, I'm taking a tacked cloth, which is a sticky cloth that you can get at your local hardware store and this will pull off any dust and you want to make sure you do this in between coats of top coating or if you have one of these you could have done this after you were done sanding before your first coat that way you don't have any debris in between those coats so you're going to make sure you wipe that off really well and then you are going to repeat the process
Normally I do not paint the hardware, but I'm gonna show you how I paint hardware. So I cleaned it really well, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to scuff sand this hardware. That way I give the paint something to adhere to. Now I could use a gripping primer as well, but if you prepare the surface really well and clean it and scuff sand, generally this will stick as long as you have prepped it really well and you seal it really well. But you can also do a gripping primer. I know that Kills has an adhesion primer that you can use. There's many companies that have adhesion primers. So I'm just doing thin layers. Again, that is the key. Do thin layers of your paint. You do not want to glop it on, allow it to dry properly. I only needed two layers of paint on these. And so I put the thin layer on, allowed it to dry properly. And then I put another layer on there. And once everything was fully dry, I actually waited 24 hours to allow it to really fully dry. And now I am taking that mixture of the top coat and the paint, and I'm going to just go over it. You can see I'm going to lightly brush it kind of like a dry brush. And then I'm also going to stipple it on there because I don't want this to be a super thick layer of sealer as well. You can allow it to dry and you could do a scuff sand in between, or you can just go ahead and put another layer on there if you want. And I did two coats of the sealer over top of this. All right, everybody, here is this piece. It is done. You can kind of see a little bit of the, little bit of a matte sheen. Nice. It looks nice. Okay, so this is for my husband. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And we sealed the hardware and we put it on and we did all the things. And this is how you can remove a transfer and still get a smooth finish. And this is also one way to get a smooth finish with dark paint. I know I have a few videos. I like to use a different technique in videos just so that you can see that there's different ways to do it. I know someone's gonna say, you should just spray it. I have a sprayer, but I don't have a spray setup, and it's always raining here. So people need options. A girl needs options. All right, guys. Till next time, I will see you guys later. Happy creating and bye. Bye. You got me straight.